Hello world of YouTube and welcome to another episode of Viral's Movie Reviews! The show where I sit down and take a look at movies that you guys suggest, I go to the movies and see, or I feel like discussing. And while not really going to the movies a whole lot these days, uh, it's weird, normally I've gone to the movies at least a handful of times so far this year, but I haven't seen any movies that have come out this year. Not that I'm against watching them on streaming platforms or renting movies after they're out of the theaters to watch them. Um, that's how I usually catch up at the end of the year. I just, because I haven't been able to go to the movies, I haven't really been watching a whole lot of new movies. I've actually mostly been playing a lot of video games. Like, that whole aspect of the channel, I've been, like, du doubling down on investing my time into because... I don't know, there's something really magical about going to the movies, but that's that's a conversation for another day. I do have a movie I want to sit down and talk about with you guys, and it's the one that's at the end card of this show. The one that I put onto the shelf that I don't really have anymore, and that's The Game. I didn't pick this movie for that end card as like some sort of bit or purposeful movie, like purposeful point, but I do love this movie, and I do feel like in David Fincher's filmography... It's a little underrated, and I recently rewatched it uh, with Rachel because we had like like a, a movie night, and she picked the movie Game Night, which I hadn't seen, and I figured my movie that I'd pick to, to for both of us to watch that is kind of similar is the Game. Uh, I love David Fincher. I'm a I'm a pretty big David Fincher fan, um, and when I was combing through his filmography, I didn't really see a whole lot of people talk about this one. Chris Stuckman kind of made a good argument for it, and I appreciate his review of it, and I feel like it's, it's a really solid film. Like, it doesn't help that it's wedged between two of his most beloved films in his filmography, Seven and Fight Club, um, and I get why this one kind of gets slept on as a result, especially given that, like, after that, he did Panic Room, which is arguably one of his weaker films, and if that one got press, and this one just continued to be buried with time. But I feel like revisiting it is always a treat. Because there's a lot of great imagery. There's a lot of poignant cinematography that's here. And the acting in this is actually very, very good. I think Douglas does a great job at carrying this film. And I think it's partially because he's playing an archetype that he plays a lot in cinema. He's playing a big business, uh, money guy, money bags type of guy, uh, a Wall Street individual, if you will. And I like that this film takes a look at that character type and completely puts him through the ringer. For those who don't know what this movie's about, uh, Michael Douglas, it's his birthday. And it's his, the, the day that he's celebrating this year is the same year that his father had killed himself on when he was a child. It's a very poignant birthday to him. And it's seemingly a point where he feels like he needs to actually take back his life. There's a lot of points in the beginning where he kind of passes off uh, any mention of his father. But it's true. Like, it, there's flashbacks to him sort of reflecting on it being that particular special birthday. And it seemingly is perp it's meaningful to him, this birthday. The fact that he's made it this far, you know. Um, and his younger brother, played by Sean Penn, decides to make this birthday extra special by giving him a, uh, a gift in the form of an experience that is a game. Um, it is a nameless game wherein uh, Michael Douglas has to go to this corporation, answer a bunch of questions, take a physical, do all this stuff to get prepped for the experience. And he's basically said, all right, it'll start when it starts. Um, and immediately the movie starts to kind of mess with the viewer and that shortly after he goes through this whole experience which is a big inconvenience for him he gets to climb and they tell him his game's not gonna happen and then shit starts to get fucky with his life uh and the movie starts to really go put him through the ringer by giving him trauma uh in the form of a statue or of a clown doll placed in the same position his father was found outside of his home in the form of messing with his television. ...to a bloated millionaire fat cat like you. In other financial news, stock markets rose both domestically and abroad today after the announcement of stronger-than-expected earnings by several high-tech companies. 
but dipped again, reacting to reports that Nicholas Van Orton had sneezed. Are you going to spend the rest of the evening prying at that clown's mouth? Just continuing to ramp up the intensity after they mess with him. That makes him and, by proxy, the viewer question if this was all just a big setup to just fuck with this guy and tank him for all he's worth. It's a, it's a, it's a hell of a ride. I really like this movie. I do think that not only does Michael Douglas do a great job in this film, but uh, Deborah Kara Unger... Uh, the woman that plays Christine, uh, kind of his sort of partner in, in, in this experience, um, she does a good job as well at sort of tying into a lot of the themes of paranoia that the film goes through, and she plays a good counterpoint to Michael Douglas as well. I do like Sean Penn in this movie. I kind of wish he was in it more. He plays kind of a brief role. He's in it in the beginning, and then he comes in a little later when things are really fucked up. I, I paid the bill. I gave him their fucking money. They won't leave me alone. What are they doing to you? Everything. I'm a goddamn human piñata. Calm down. Then why do they keep playing if you already paid? I don't know. I don't know. I paid him more to make it stop. Kind of disappears for a while. But he's great when he's here. He plays a good, again, piece in Michael Douglas's game and puzzle in his life. I also just want to make note that one of the weirder people in this movie is Charles Martinet, the voice of Mario, plays... Nicholas Van Orton, Michael Douglas's character's dad, which is just, it's just weird. I enjoy the ride this film gives, takes you. There's a lot of sequences that I really enjoy. I like the sequence when he comes home and his and his house is covered in black lights and graffiti. Just the just the look of the scene is incredible. I love the use of the the Jefferson Airplane song White Rabbit. <laughs> In that instance as well i think it kind of fits with the themes of delving into the madness incredibly well there's just a lot of good use of music a lot of good use of like the cinematography is great i think the pacing of it is really good as well they just keep getting more and more out there and uh, it builds to an incredible climax that i think is a great part in the film uh the scene where he's in the taxi cab is incredibly tense and uh like get you invested it's nothing super graphic the movie which again being sandwiched between fight club and seven you would think this is a little tame and in comparison it is but i think that it's still incredibly engaging in spite of its lack of maybe extra extremeness in violence or gore or any sort of sensual things there's like one scene where they're like trying to implicit uh tried to blackmail Michael Douglas's character involving not even nudes, lewds of him and somebody else. And that's the closest it gets to being any sort of raciness in that regard. But the film is still incredibly tense. It's just great. You know, I feel like it's really worth your time. If you're a fan of David Fincher and you may have passed on this one, it's one of those movies that I feel like people kind of sleep on. There's a handful of movies like that from directors I love. You know, Insomnia, uh, the Christopher Nolan movie with Robin, Robin Williams and Al Pacino, another incredible kind of overlooked gem in his filmography you know be crying rewind for michelle gondry every director i find has like movies like that and i feel like while this isn't the only movie like that in david fincher's filmography i feel like it's the best of those it's just a really good film and while there isn't necessarily anything to spoil there kind of is i feel like it's worth a watch i've talked about sequences but i'm trying to avoid how the plot develops because Michael Douglas, and again, how poignant this birthday is to him, seemingly is an important part of the film that carries throughout the entire experience. And I love how that is paid off. I love the planting of payoff of that. Um, again, I like the, the side characters, not even just the ones I mentioned. Um, but I think that when James Re Revhorn is here, like, he's great in the instances he's here. The, the actors that are here are just having a good time. I like him here. But I think Michael Douglas does a great job at uh, carrying the film, for sure. And I feel like, again... If you want a movie to watch that you may have slept on, you may have not known was really good, watch the game. It's really underrated. You know, uh, while I didn't have a purpose to put it in the end slate card, I did because I think it's a great movie that more people should watch. Um, yeah, that's my thoughts on the game. Uh, what do you like about it? Have you seen that movie? Do you like it? Let me know in those comments down below. Did you like this review? If you did, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general nerdery content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons. If you would like to join their ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or help drive the community, it's linked in the description. 
I'm gonna get out of here though. I have been Viral Rack. You guys are good at these situations, and I'll see you another day. <laughs>